Support WrestleTalk! Donate on Patreon. Shane McMahon and The Miz lose their titles. Leo Rush loses Bobby Lashley's title. And most devastatingly of all, the team of Vacant and Vacant lose the women's tag titles. Also, Kofi Kingston rocks. I'm Ollie Davis. Press the thumbs up button, give us a subscribe, and answer our question of the day in the comments down below. Where should Kofi Kingston go from here? Because I'll be replying to people from out of nowhere. Also vote in the poll above my head to give your rating for the show, where you can choose from best of both worlds, great per view, thumbs in the middle, their per view, and worst of both worlds, while I review Elimination Chamber 2019. Stop me if you've heard this one before. The Cruiserweights had one of the best in-ring matches on the show, with Buddy Murphy defending against Akira Tozawa. Akira reversed a second rope powerbomb into a Hurricane Rana. Ha! Got a dive caught into a deadlift suplex. Ha! And hit a reverse jumping Hurricane Rana for a great near fall. Ha ha ha! Murphy gave Tozawa a lot, but it was neither enough to win the Cruiserweight title, nor WWE's attention for their efforts, with the production team playing a New Day inset promo over a few minutes of their match. New Day here! Not now, New Day! Even though it's the pre-show, where there's 45 other minutes you could have done that with instead. Like Kevin Owens' latest I'm Just an Ordinary Guy promo. This time filmed from his car, where he wanted Finn Balor to win the Intercontinental title. So he's a babyface. A Riot Squad to become champions. Or a heel. And that pineapple on pizza is a sin. I honestly don't feel as strongly about that as everyone else does. Paige here! The main show wasn't just brought to you by the the biopic movie Fighting With My Family, but also Vaseline. With Mandy Rose's entrance for the opening women's tag team title elimination chamber being covered in the stuff, providing a rare glimpse into the mind of Vince McMahon when he sees her fire and desire tag team. Sorry, Sonya. The main story going into this match was how Sasha Banks would cope with her recent injuries. They flipped the narrative on its head, having Banks frequently saving Bailey instead. Unfortunately, the first two thirds of the match weren't that great, but it picked up considerably just before Nia Jax and Tamina entered, with a thumb run of everybody hitting their finishers. Weirdly, it was the Iconics that eliminated Naomi and Carmella first, rather than their long-running foe, Rose. Jax and Tamina then got to run wild for a bit, eliminating both the Iconics and the Riot Squad. But as we've seen with Braun Strowman time and time again, monster wrestlers can't course correct when they're running towards something they might crash into. And Nia was taken out by missing Bailey and charging into the pod door, allowing the remaining two teams to all pin Tamina at the same time. Similar to the main event, the chamber levelled up when it came down to the final two, Rose and Deville versus Banks and Bailey, which even included a neat callback to last year's match, with Sasha helping Bailey onto the top of the pod rather than pushing her off it. And then finally, after a year of endless matches against the Riot Squad and a quickly dropped run of counselling session skits, Bailey and Banks finally did something of note. They became WWE's inaugural women's tag team champions. The post-match in-ring interview was one of those rare moments where WWE genuinely connected with the crowd, as Sasha and Bayley were serenaded with You Deserve It chants. And it was well deserved, for two women who have been treated awfully on the main roster. So now expect a Sasha heel turn on Bayley on tonight's Raw. Continuing the genuine feel-goods, Miz announced next that he'd be dedicating his match to his dad, his daughter, his wife Maurice, and their new upcoming baby. It was a lovely announcement to share with us, and probably also means Maurice is turning heel on Miz by revealing it's Shane's. Once the tag team championship match was underway, the Usos wrestled for the titles with all the intensity of a late night police officer confrontation. The story of Miz and Shane not having the same tag team relationship as real life twins Jimmy and Jay was effectively weaved into the structure of the match by having Miz Man get the better of them by working well together. And then it was the Usos who self-imploded, with Jimmy accidentally taking out Jay with a dive outside, allowing for Shane to hit a huge flying elbow through the commentary desk because he's the best wrestler in the world. He's got a trophy from his dad to prove it. So it fell to Miz to scupper their win, getting pinned by surprise to lose the belts. 
Great way to dedicate something to your unborn child. While this was a fun match, and a very well-told feud in isolation, I can't help but think this story would have been so much better if Ms. Man never won the titles at Royal Rumble. That way you could have had them try and try again, building to an eventual win at WrestleMania. Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush took on Finn Believe, or next. Crucially, not Demon Finn, because the Intercontinental title is still not as important as facing Baron Corbin at SummerSlam. What are the rules? What? Rules. The handicap match was structured around Rush only tagging in when Balor was down, and rushing back to Lashley once he'd recovered. It all built to Leo getting cocky, blind tagging himself in, but then getting trapped by Balor who hit the coup de grace to become the new Intercontinental Champion. The match was nothing special, and handicap matches for titles are dumb. But at least Finn has finally won a belt since relinquishing the Universal Championship back in August 2016. Lashley beat up Rush after afterwards in one of those angles that could just be heel frustration rather than them actually splitting up as an act. Wow, three matches into the main show and we've got three sets of new champions. With all those title changes, it almost makes you believe that Ronda Rousey could lose her Raw Women's title to... Um... Oh god, who's she facing? Uh, it's, it's not, it's not Becky because she's suspended and it's not Charlotte either even though that's what the, the building video clip just focused on. Natalia's in an all-time classic feud with Dana Brooke. Uh, everyone else was in the, the, the chamber match. It's Ruby Riot! It's, it's, it's Ruby Riot! Come to think of it, I don't think Ronda will lose. After a clip of Becky attacking Charlotte at the previous night's WWE Live event, and then an in-ring promo from Charlotte, Ronda finally took on... I've forgotten who it was again. It's Ruby Riot! I've written it down now. It's, I've got it. Ronda took on Ruby wearing a much better vest and baseball hat combo than her usual Roddy Piper cosplay and befitting of a match that had absolutely zero build, Rousey made Ruby tap in under two minutes, bringing back her first finisher in WWE, the WrestleMania sign point! It, cu it cuts the air so hard like that, the, the, the force of the air just it hits you in the face and knocks you out. Because this was always destined to be more wrestling angle than wrestling match, Ruby Thanosed away in the ring to be replaced by Charlotte and a suspended, hobbling Becky Lynch on crutches. WWE security is so bad, she outran them. Becky then awesomely attacks Charlotte with her own booking crutch. Thank you. Hit here all week. To then turn on Ronda too. This was an awesome angle that continued Becky's momentum and set up multiple ways they can continue this story through to WrestleMania. Putting on Baron Corbin versus Braun Strowman just before the main event perfectly encapsulates the progressiveness of 2019. A big meaty man match is now the Divas piss break spot. They tried their best with a few hardcore spots, but nobody is into this feud. And Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley getting involved to help Baron win. Why are you a team? Wasn't just lackluster lazy booking, it sets up at least another month of disinteresting mid-card fodder. Speaking of lackluster and disinteresting, how about that most recent class of NXT call-ups? Lacey Evans randomly walked to the ring, stopped halfway, and then left. Similar to the Elias getting interrupted angle on the go-home Raw, this was poorly executed, confusing to the viewer, and ultimately just plain pants. Thankfully, WWE regained their credibility in the next segment by debuting their next pay-per-view's own rap song. How edgy! Blood, sweat, tears, pain, full throttle, high octane, making moves, taking names, cruising down that fast lane, fear, facing, dream, chasing, now or never, no dream, wasting, fueled up on my heart's racing, time's up, no second placing, it's WWE fast lane, baby! <coughs> Moving on. Proposal. WWE do their best booking when they have to change plans last minute and their backs are against the wall. Example, Mustafa Ali had to be pulled from this Elimination Chamber main event, and in just six days, WWE have created their most emotionally engaging story of the year by replacing him with Kofi Kingston. He got by far the biggest reaction when coming out, and he proceeded to keep athletically jumping from brass ring to brass ring throughout the match. The only slight adjustment I'd make was to have him 
start the chamber against Daniel Bryan rather than be the first out his pod. Still, we did get an excellent chop showdown between Bryan and Samoa Joe to kick things off, which is where Bryan got the red welts that covered his chest until the end. The rest of the competitors were just filler bodies really, with AJ eliminating Joe first, who really should have been saved for a monster spot later in the match, and Jeff Hardy being taken out by Bryan. Randy Orton then eliminated AJ Styles with a fun RKO from out of you guess nowhere! Seemingly setting up a WrestleMania program between the two, and Kingston then hitting a trouble in paradise to take out Randy, finally paying off their feud that was unceremoniously dropped almost a decade ago. As the final two, Kofi and Bryan wrestled a terrific 15 minute finale full of drama, with the crowd heavily behind Kingston to beat the heel champion. But sadly, it was Kofi's high risk offence that was his downfall, missing a splash off the top of the pod, allowing Bryan to retain. Yet despite losing, it was Kingston who stood tall at the end, receiving a thank you Kofi stand innovation from the crowd afterwards, with Xavier and Big E running down to embrace I'M NOT CRYING, YOU'RE CRYING! The emotion was genuine, making the teasing shot of the New Day sitting on the steps with the WrestleMania 35 sign behind them even more hopeful. This was an excellent WWE pay-per-view. We've got Banks and Bailey as the inaugural women's tag team champions, Bala as the intercontinental champion, a great Becky Lynch angle, an incredible main event performance from Kofi, and most importantly, my new favourite song, it's WWE Fastlane, baby! I'm going to pretend like Braun vs Corbin didn't happen and give Elimination Chamber 2019 the top possible score. Best of both worlds. But how did Luke, Laurie and I fare in our own fantasy predictions Wrestle League? Click the WrestleTalk.com link on screen now to find out where we rank alongside the hundreds of WrestleTalk pledge hammers on Patreon who also took part. I've been Ollie Davis and that was Wrestling.